My name is Keith Nick. I'm the Battleship Operations Manager here on board Battleship Wisconsin. I want to thank you for joining me today at another Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure. Uh, as you all know by now, if I've got the opportunity to talk with a former crew member, I jump all over that chance. And today I have with me a uh, former crew member, shipmate of mine. This is uh, Bosun Mate 3rd Class Robert Sika. Robert was in 5th Division on board Battleship Wisconsin, and for his general quarter station, his battle station, uh, in essence, was this mount right here. Uh, this is Mount 5-3. 5 is the, uh, the size of the barrel. It's a 5-inch gun, and it's number 3. We're the second gun on the uh, starboard side of the ship. So if you watch my videos about the bullseyes, you'll know exactly where we're standing, just based on the fact that we're three, so we're on the starboard side, and we're one back from number one, which is just above me. I'm going to let Robert tell you a little bit about what he did here in General Quarters, or his battle station. Hey, Robert. How you doing? Good. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks for having me. All right, buddy. So tell me about uh, life uh, Life as a postmate in the gun mount for General Quarters. Well, it's hot and tired and noisy, I can tell you that. Okay. Yep. The general Quarters, we would uh, have to power the mount up. And I would throw projectiles in. I had a hot caseman and a powder man, and we would throw them in. They all came in three different two different sections, a powder and a bullet. And uh, we'd throw them in one time and bring them home and electronically fire. What was your what was your job title in there? Projectile. So you, were, so you were a projectile. So yep. you were you were actually taking the projectiles and putting them onto the cradle? Yes. Okay. Yep. Alright. We take them out of the hoist, throw them into the cradle. As soon as the powder went in there, I pulled down a little lever and it would automatically ram it into the breach and become the fire. Let's go inside and take a look at that. Okay. So follow me inside. We're going to go take a look inside of the uh, gun mount. See, what the funny thing about this is, like the last time we really did this, we were 19. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hello. So we're now inside the uh, the mount, the gun mount itself. Uh, below us, of course, is one of the handling rooms, the upper handling room. Below that would be the lower handling room. But up here in the gun mount itself, this is the gun mount portion of the uh, of the gun itself. This is this is the part you see outside of the ship, and this is where the actual barrels are. And uh, so ammunition and powder are going to come up here into the mount and. Uh, get loaded and then that's what Robert's going to talk about but briefly before we get to that I just want to go over because I keep using the word mount so you know we have the, the turrets and we also have mounts uh, the turrets of course are the big 16 inch 50 caliber naval rifles the mounts are these 5 inch 38s here the smaller ones they are called mounts because they are actually literally mounted to the ship the turrets are not uh, attached to the ship uh, they, which is why they're, they're, they're not called mounts, they're turrets. This is a mount, it is actually attached or mounted to the ship. Uh, but I'm gonna let Robert talk about what it is that he did up here uh, during his general quarters or battle station. So Robert, please, take it right. away. Well, I was a Mount 53 uh, projectile went on the right gun. So I would take the shell out of the hoist here, throw it in the breech, lower it, my powder in my gigging axe, throw a powder in there it would ram and it would electronically fire. If you'd like, I'd run through a whole procedure of... Yeah, please, sorry. I would. So, uh, we have here a, a dummy five inch projectile. Yeah. So just as it, it would come out of the hoist. So it would come out of the hoist. So you'd step, hit your foot on the pedal there. The shell would be in the hoist. Of course, you don't want to touch it because of the grease. But you would just grab the top of the barrel of the, of the bullet Yank it out and toss it in. It goes into the breech. And a powder would be set back here. And then you would come over here. So to fire the gun, you would pull down this lever all the way down, but it would go down. This would lock down and it would automatically close the breech, automatically sending an electrical charge and then fire the round. This thing, as soon as the whole gun slides back, mm -hmm. it resets this. So as it slides back up, this is already up. It's around, I'm already holding a projectile ready to go in. So when it comes back, the only thing that comes out is a, is a powder casing, which ejects out through here and down through this chute and out the back of the gun, yeah. which is why this rides up and down so the powder can slide out the bottom. You load that, they fire it, you're standing right there, you're ready to go with another projectile 
and then uh, it opens up, you feed it again, boom, and, and just keep doing that until you're given the, the until you're given the order to, to you know suspense suspense fire. Yep. Now we've all heard about a well-trained gun crew can do this many rounds per minute and this sort of this this and that sort of thing. What is what is reasonable to believe for uh, for Battleship Wisconsin as far as firing from this mount? Your gun crew. Let's talk about the guys that you got working here with you. What what is reasonable? Like a good working load or a strained load? A, a good working load. A good working load. Probably three to five rounds a minute. Three to five rounds a minute, and if uh, that, that strain load, we really need to get projectiles down. Yeah, you probably pop that up to about seven to ten, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And that, but that's a lot of that's a lot of hustle. It's a lot of hustle. Now, uh, there's quite a few people that work in the mount itself. Yeah. How many different positions do we have in the mount itself? I believe there's ten. Ten altogether, yeah. and you are your title again was projectileman. Projectileman on mm -hmm. the. Right, the right gun. Right gun. So there would be another another sailor right here who would be the projectman for the left gun. Yep. Uh, there's also I'm guessing somebody back here because all you're moving is projectile. Right. So we gotta get powder up there too. So there's a powder man for both sides here back yep. here as well. So there's also a hot casing. Oh, so there's a third person there's back a, there's here. There's a there's a crew of three for each gun, uh -huh. and the hot caseman's job he stands back here. Okay. And the only thing he's supposed to do is to to clear the chute if the uh, casing is coming the powder casing. Gets jammed up. Okay, so the it's, it's, it's an automatic discharge, and it gets jammed up. He's there to make sure that it's yep. clear for the next uh, the next powder case. And that's the first job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah, you got to move up in rank, so yep. to speak. Uh, yeah. If they get it, start off with something, uh, so you can see what's going on, and then you eventually get to the guy who's actually loading this. Thing. You get the responsible part. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, you were telling me a story before uh, that revolved around these switches here, and it's got to do with. Uh, all, all Battleship Wisconsin sailors know about the time where they actually told us to brace for impact, to brace for shock. Mm. Uh, that was, uh, that's one of those stories that you started to tell me. So if you would, uh, just a little bit, like, remember, keep it fr uh, family friendly. Okay. But yeah, just uh, if you would go through that. So uh, tell me about that morning that day for you. All right, well, I was uh, asleep in my rack, taking a nap. We had a break. I was having full combat gear. So they, they called us to general quarters. We had incoming missiles. One MC is going off. They're vampire, vampire, incoming missiles. It's like chaos on the deck. I, I bust out of our berthing onto the deck. I run to the gun mount. Um, everybody's running around. I get in the gun mount. The first thing I do, I hop over to gun. I hit these two buttons. Flip this up. I hit the two start buttons. This is for power for my gun and this side of the gun mount. We didn't have any power. So I jumped over here, turned on these two. We didn't have any power on this side either. By this time, the rest of the gun crew is in. Nothing is moving. We can't train the barrels, can't train the mount. Chief Rollick is in here. The doors are all shut. Um, he's like, Sika, turn on the gun, turn on the gun. I'm like, we have no power. So come to find out, they had tagged our mount out for maintenance that day. It had been tagged out. And uh, we were locked in here, and the next thing we knew, we heard Chief Rollick grab his headphones, had a wide-eyed look, and I heard, brace for impact. And, it was, and they overshot us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, then the British tornado goes, goes, goes by. Yeah, and then, we, and then we, the look of relief came over everybody's face as we spilled out of the gun mount, happy to get out of our yes. out of the coffin. <laughs> uh, now, something else that you were telling me about before was that's a really good spot to sleep. Believe it or not, it is. Yeah. If you can get on your side, it's actually sort of comfortable. You can get in the tray, kind of cradles you almost perfectly. Yeah, I, I guess as a 20-year-old young man, it's not that big of a deal either. No, yeah, yeah. sleep upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, as a 20-year-old running around the ship, wasn't a big deal for me either. But yeah, yeah, yeah now I don't, I don't look at that as being like, I'm going to sleep in that. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, we came out of the, uh, the mount itself because it's incredibly hot in there. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you all for joining me today on this Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure. I want to thank Robert here for, uh, for coming by. Thanks for having me. me. You're very welcome. Thank you for, uh, for talking about the mount itself and your job responsibilities at General Quarters. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, please uh, leave comments down at the bottom. If you want to see something on board the ship, I'm more than happy to, uh, to try and get that done. Uh, leave a suggestion down there. If you have questions about the ship, you can stop by. We always welcome guests, of course. We're open seven days a week. Uh, to see this magnificent ship. I got crew here that's uh, that's very willing and able and ready to talk about uh, our beloved battleship, Battleship Wisconsin. So I want to thank you again for joining me today on this Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure, and I look forward to speaking with you again. 
as you may know from watching my videos, I am also I am a former crew member. I served aboard Battleship Wisconsin during Desert Shield and Desert Storm, and we are in the 04 level pilot house. Now, my job in the Navy was navigation. Quartermaster is the title. Uh, in the Army and the Air Force, that's supply, but in the Navy, that means navigation. So in a nutshell, everything Christopher Columbus can do, I can do too. Uh, so we're up here in the pilot house, which is where we navigate the ship from. Specifically inside the pilot house, we have another room, it's called the Citadel. It's the heaviest armored portion of the ship, and what it does is, the Citadel, what it does is protects the helm, or the steering wheel, and the lee helm, or the gas pedal, uh, from battle damage. And I have with me today, uh, Boston Mate 3rd Class Robert Sika. Robert was a former crew member, just as myself. And this was one of his primary stations here to be a helmsman. So I'm happy to say that I'm not the only kid on my block that has a driver's license for a battleship. Robert also has a driver's license for a battleship, but I'm gonna let him talk about what it meant to be helmsman on board Battleship Wisconsin. So Robert, thanks very much for, uh, for working me with this, uh, with this video. So tell me about being a helmsman on uh, one of the world's premier battleships. What would you like to know? Pressure? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of pressure. Okay. But uh, getting yelled at by whichever officer was on watch out there to watch my helm. Mind your helm? Yeah. Mind my helm. But, uh, okay. Other than that, it was, it was fantastic. It was a dream come true. So uh, now uh, a lot of people, they look around, they come up here on tours, and they say, well, how does the guy drive and see anything? What are you looking at when you're driving the ship? Nothing. No. Um, well, um, you're looking at something. So well, I'm looking at my uh, my rudder telegraph. Okay. Basically, I'm looking at what, what degree my rudder angle is at, and that's my primary job is to stand right here, hold this wheel, and stare right at this. And as soon as they say left 10 degrees or port 10 degrees or starboard 20 degrees, it's my job to relay that. And say starboard 10 degrees, I. 10 degrees, I, sir. Then that would be my job. Okay, and if we give you a course to steer, then you're looking at the gyro compass, and you're staying on course. And that's all. That's all I was supposed to do. Now, how how uh, so the battleship, of course, is 887 feet long. Yes. And uh, I, of course, she doesn't stop on a dime. But how does she do steering wise? How does she do turning wise? If they, if they give you a, they give you an order to come to a course, how quickly does she respond? Well, I'm going to say it would respond comparably to that of a Ferrari, although you'll probably look at me like I'm crazy because it's 58,000 tons. But believe it or not, I can move the wheel that far and you will instantly see the, the nose of the ship will start swinging. Okay. Which is many times I'd have the Lee Helm over here, he'd be telling me something, I'd turn it and I'd say, what? And I'd look and I'd just move the wheel a little bit and then the officer that was out there, he'd turn around, my, my helm. And so I got to know that so well. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, did you stand Lee Helm watch as well, or did you just have the helm watch? Just the helm watch. Just the helm watch. Yep. Okay. I want to thank you all for joining me today on this Whiskey Wednesday virtual adventure. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, or, or comments, please leave them below. Uh, I look forward to, uh, to visiting with you all again. I hope that you continue to watch, subscribe to the channel. Robert, I want to thank you for joining me again today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Always a pleasure of mine to get to talk to former crew members. So I want to thank you for being here doing me and uh, doing this. And I want to thank you all for joining me today, and I look forward to talking to you again.